Okay, hi everyone, welcome back. So this is uh, just another quick video showing you how to uh, wrangle data, uh, how to um, clean and tidy up data sets uh, using Python and using the pandas and numpy software libraries. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, again, I'm working in Jupyter Notebook and what I'm gonna do on this occasion is uh, show you firstly I'll, I'll show how I'll show you how to generate a simulated data set um, so create a pandas data frame but uh, a fake da data using numpy's random dot random function uh, and I'll also import a data set uh, from a CSV file and I'll demonstrate ways in which to, to manipulate the data by changing the row and column order and also we will look at converting the data types of different variables so that's something we often have to do when we inherit a data set or we have a data set we import it into some sort of software program to to do some analysis and the data types are not of the sort that we need in order to do some sort of statistical analysis on them or perform mathematical operations on them so or what or, all i'm going to do today is import pandas and numpy demonstrate how to do this previously but um, I, as I've said before, it's kind of common to give um, nicknames uh, when you import uh, import software libraries in Python just to make it easier to invoke them when you need them. So uh, I'm going to import pandas as pd and numpy as mp. And uh, I'll, I'll do that now whilst, we're, whilst um, we're at the beginning of the notebook. I'm going to import a data set. Uh, it says various data sets there, but it should just say a data set as a CSV file to analyze and the data set is going to be uh, I'm going to save it as an object I'm going to call it crime and it's a data set relating to uh, fear of crime essentially um, so I'm going to you I've demonstrated this before but I'm going to use pandas uh, and the dot read underscore CSV method and I'm going to, I'm going to I've, I've specified in parentheses here as a string between these single quotes, the name of the CSV file is fearofcrime.csv and it's saved in a folder on my computer. So I'm going to, I'm going to import that and save it uh, using the name crime. Um, so this data set, um, it's, it's one that I often use to demonstrate stuff in teaching, in my teaching of postgraduate uh, stats. It's been kicking around the department I work in for quite a while. Um, it may have originally come from a textbook. I'm not sure. So I'm not quite sure what the origin but we'll see with the variables that it includes shortly okay so i'm going to import that another thing that i thought i'd demonstrate um we can use pan we can we can check the version of pandas that we have installed um, by specifying pd p pd dot uh, and then we've got what are known as dunders or double underscores so this is there are actually two underscores on either side of the word version here so it says pd dot double underscore version double underscore and if i run that it basically just tells us what versions of version of pandas um i uh, i have installed and i'm running um from the environment that i'm working in this is, which is the kind of data science environment that i've previously discussed where i do a lot of this type of analysis okay so um, firstly, I was going to just demonstrate how to create a data frame uh, using using the random dot random function from NumPy. So previously, I kind of demonstrated um, how we could use the PD the pandas dot data frame uh, capital D capital F uh, method to create a pandas data frame and we when we did that we actually passed a dictionary uh, to the data frame method um, so that was a, um, a dictionary of key value pairs the keys were the variable or column names and the values were like lists of numbers um, which represented the scores for each of those variables uh, and we ran that and it created a nice HTML data frame with variable names given by the keys and the data 
given by the values in the lists that we passed to the dictionary. Um, on, there is a, another way to create a data frame though. Um, so if, we, if you wanted to simulate a data frame of a given size, uh, maybe to test some sort of analysis on something like that, we can use it. We can actually use NumPy and the np.random.rand method. And basically this is gonna create um, a load of random numbers for us. And in the parentheses after ran, you can see I've, I've specified four comma eight. So the first, these are row column pairs. So when I run this, what we will see is it's gonna create a, a load of simulated random numbers, um, four rows and eight columns of them. So let me just run that now. And there you can see we've got four, four rows and eight columns, obviously zero index as normal in Python. Um, so perhaps uh, with a data frame like this, we might be we might be simulating it to test something in particular. But we could, if we wanted, we, we don't want the columns, the variables to just have numbers. So the column names, we rather rather than them be represented by numbers that we might want to be represented by something alphabetical. So we could we could add column names to the, to the above uh, by calling the same function, but this time we're going to specify after a comma within parentheses. We're going to specify columns equals list, and then I've just passed it a a single string object of items and note that I've only put one string in there uh, to be used for the column names and I've not specified some sort of delimiter. But if I run that, what you can see is we, we those, um, it's generated a, another set of, if you notice the values are different to the data frame specified above, it's created a new, a new set of random numbers, four rows by eight columns. But this time it's, it's given our variables um, alphabetical, uh, uh, so letters for the variable names rather than just the numbers. Okay. All right. So um, I was going to demonstrate. I was going to use the crime. We import. I imported the um, crime data set up here. Saved it as an object called crime. Fear of crime data set. So I was going to use that data set just to demonstrate a couple of things you can do in pandas. So if I if I run this cell here, it'll give us the head, the first kind of five rows of data in the data set. Um, you can see there we've got uh, five variables, sex, which is recorded as one or two, so male, male or female. Anxiety level, uh, which is recorded as one, two or three, low, medium, high, I believe. Um, we can't see one in this column here, but there are ones in the data set. Then we've got some sort of, of um, decimal representation, some sort of scale measure of stress, then similar, some sort of scale measure of worry, um, and another variable there called construct, which is some sort of scale measure of uh, constructive thinking saved as a decimal to quite a large number of decimal places in this case. But that's the actual, that's kind of what the data frame looks like. Um, and if I run the cell below, it's always useful, I think, to kind of look at the info in relation to uh, the, data, the data frame, the data that you have imported. And we can see there are 235 um, participants, two, 235 observations in this data frame. And for each of these variables, construct, total worry, stress, angst, level six, we're getting 235 non-null observations. So that's kind of a useful thing to check. It's telling us that we've not got any missing data. You know, if we'd had, um, if we'd only, if we had constructive thinking scores for only 210, then we'd, it would tell us we only had 210 non-null, um, which would give us an um, indication we had like 25 missing uh, data points on that particular variable. Uh, the other thing that's always worth looking at is the D type, the data type. And interestingly, in this case, um, as I've kind of said previously, usually when you import the data set, Pandas will recognize the type of um, the type of data that you have and import it correctly. But it's not always the case that it does. And all of these variables 
are shown as objects. So they're shown as that they're, they're so essentially a string objects, string object representations. I'm not sure why that is with this, because um, they're, they're kind of all numeric. I'd be, I would be less surprised if I saw them all as kind of integers or floating point numbers, decimal numbers, but in this case, they've all been saved as objects, which kind of is useful in some way because it helps, them, it gives me something to demonstrate. But before we sort of look at conveying these data types, there's a couple of other things I was going to demonstrate in this particular video. Um, so perhaps this is our data in the order it's saved in. Perhaps we might want to, with the data set, or we might have reason to, on some occasion, to reverse the order of the rows. And to do that, we can use what's known as the dot loc method. And so this would be most useful without kind of data that was alphabetically organized in some way uh, or organized from last to first, for example. Um, uh, so if, if I run this, basically, if I take the crime, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm specifying the crime data frame object I'm using the dot loc method. And in square brackets here, I'm basically uh, there are two two colons there, which is so uh, which is basically taking it and telling telling Python to take all the rows from start to the end, and then a negative one, and it's that essentially is telling it to reverse the row the order, the row order of the data frame, and then to keep it all neat, I've I've caught I've used the dot head method. So in one line, if I run this, what we will see is our data frame now, the index is 234, 233. So it's, it's descending rather than ascending. So it's basically just reversed the order of our data. So kind of the person that was the last participant is now shown on the top row. Okay, so maybe we might have a reason to do that on some occasion. There might be something we want to do. We might want to bring a certain group to the top of the data frame. So having reversed the, the order of the rows, um, we've now got this issue where our, maybe we need our index uh, to start at zero. Um, so we might want to reset the index. So it's, it's, it goes back to being ascending rather than descending. So the, the, the new order of the data will remain, but we're just reset this index. So it starts at one and goes down to 234 again. Uh, and we can do that with this by using this um, dot reset index method. And we're going to say drop equals true. So basically, if I run this, the other reset this index column back to zero and it'll be in an ascending order. OK, so maybe there's a reason we might have needed to do that with our data. Hard to know. But it's it's good to know that it's something it's something you can do to manipulate your data. One thing that might be a bit more useful though, or something we might more commonly need to do, is reorganize the rearrange the order of the variables, the actual columns. Um, so we can reverse the column order in quite a similar way to which we reverse the row order. Um, so we're going to use the dot loc method, but notice the syntax is quite different. Quite different in this occasion. So we've got crime dot loc, and then in the in the square brackets, uh, we've got colon, uh, which is just saying. It, obviously, remember these are row column pairs. So that's basically just saying all all of the rows. Then we've got a comma, and then we've used the similar syntax to to what we did above when we reversed the row order. We've you've got double colons which is basically saying from, yeah, all, all of the columns and then the negative one, which is telling Python to, um, to reverse, the, reverse the order of the columns. And again, I've called the dot head method to kind of keep it all as a, a nice neat one liner. So if I run that, you can now see that the, the rows are in are reverse. Now constructive thinking was our last variable, it's now the first variable in the data set. So uh, I think you can see the difference there uh, if we compare what's in the brackets there with what's in the brackets there, when we did the row order, we didn't have a we didn't have a comma. If we did, maybe we could have um, we could have put a comma here and then a colon like this, and that would have been that would have said reverse the rows for all the columns essentially. But 
we didn't need to do that. It was we, we kind of just did it by default essentially. But but uh, in order to do in order to do the columns, we kind of had to specify one of all the rows and then put a comma and put our put our arguments our syntax for the columns in the correct place. Okay. So we've reversed rows, we've reversed columns for whatever we might want to. Um, so we. As I said above, if I kind of run this cell again, we all the all of um, the variables in this data set are shown as objects. So they're strings, they're saved as strings. So if in order to if we want to actually do some sort of mathematical uh, operations on them, we are going to need to convert them. OK, uh, so what there's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, the one I'm going to, I'll demonstrate another one another time, but the one I'm going to use here um, is I'm going to use uh, the dot apply method. I've kind of introduced that previously um, when I believe we used it to sort of change uh, change um, strings to all of the case or something like that. But I'm going to use the apply method and then we're going to use pandas, what's, what's known as the dot two numeric method. OK, so I'm, what I'm going to do here is create a new object, crime2, so a separate data frame object. And it's going to be, and I'm going to take the crime, the original crime uh, data frame object, use the dot apply method on it. And what we're passing to that is pandas2 numeric. And then I'm also get specifying the second argument, errors equals coerce. So what that will do is if there are any missing values or invalid values in the data, such as things represented as NAN, not a number, it will kind of, sorry, if there are spaces or dashes, um, it will, or missing values, it will convert those to, to NAN values. So anything invalid will, we, if we if we didn't have that and we ran it, um, if there were any invalid invalid values or missing numbers, it would probably give us an error message. But if I run that, that has worked. And if now, so I've I've what I've just done essentially in cell twelve here is I've converted all of the, all of these objects. To numeric data types. So if I run if I run data D types, data types on crime two, what you can see now is the data frame crime two. Everything is saved as a floating point number, so they're all saved as decimals. Okay, um, but one of the issues here is it's kind of useful for the stress to worry and constructive thinking variables we kind of wanted those to be we wanted those to be decimals but anxiety level and sex are actually categorical variables um, so what I'm gonna to have to do having just done that is change sex and anxiety level and level um, back to objects so uh, to do that pretty straightforward I'm gonna take our crime to data object um, I'm just going to ask, I'm just going to choose the sex variable and what I'm going to do is apply the as type uh, method to that and I'm specifying the type to be str for string. So I'm saying change sex back to a string variable and that will, that will make it an object essentially. So if I run that cell. And I'm doing the same thing with anxiety level. I'm saying change it back to a string object. And if we now look at our data types, we can see that we have two objects, sex and anxiety level, and three floating points. So three scale, decimal, numerical variables, which is much more appropriate. So we could do what we could do. Um, we could do lots of analysis and manipulations. Our data is in much more appropriate form now. Um, but as, as those first two objects, those string objects are actually categories with a finite number of values. So sex has two values, one and two, male, female, can't remember which one is which. 
and Ang's level S3 levels, low, medium, high, one, two, three, we can, we can actually convert them to categories. And categories in pandas and NumPy are a form of dynamic enumeration. And they're, they're most useful if the kind of range of possible values they can take is fixed and finite. So for these two objects, that's definitely the case. Sex only has two levels, anxiety level has three levels. Um, so a benefit of save, converting them from like a string object to a category, because they are categories, is that um, it seems to save quite a bit of memory space and computation. Okay, so we can to convert uh, sex and anxiety levels from objects to categories. We can we do it in a similar way to to uh, what we did above using the the kind of as type method, but this time where we where we'd specified string above, we're going to specify category in in quotes essentially like a string. So if I run this cell and for sex and also uh, we're going to change ang's level to a category if we run that as well what we can see now if i run this last cell is um our data frame now it's got these five variables sex and the anxiety level saved as categorical variables and the other three are saved as decimals which is you know, numeric floating point uh, variables. So the data now seems to be in the most appropriate form with our two categorical and three numeric variables. So we could go on, do some mathematical operations, run whatever statistical analyses we wanted to uh, using this crime, crime, crime underscore two data frame object that I created. Okay, so again, longer than I intended this video to be, but hopefully that's useful and I will stop the recording.